Hey everybody, welcome back to the Here to See channel. I have another Here journal for you. Here to See, focused on sharing pearls of wisdom, nuggets of knowledge, understanding the difficult, and instructions for a better life. 1 Kings chapter 1. We're reading through the entire book of 1 Kings, a chapter at a time, doing a Here journal video on each chapter. Here journaling is a method that many find edifying to their personal relationship with the Lord. Check out replicate.org to learn more about here journaling. But now, let's read and listen to 1 Kings chapter 1 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Then I'll share my here journal with you. The Book of 1 Kings chapter 1 David in his old age. King David was now very old, and no matter how many blankets covered him, he could not keep warm. So his advisors told him, Let us find a young virgin to wait on you and look after you, my lord. She will lie in your arms and keep you warm. So they searched throughout the land of Israel for a beautiful girl, and they found Abishag from Shunem and brought her to the king. The girl was very beautiful, and she looked after the king and took care of him but the king had no sexual relations with her. Adonijah claims the throne. About that time, David's son Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited 50 men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, Why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very handsome. Adonijah took Joab, son of Zeruiah, and Abiathar the priest into his confidence, and they agreed to help him become king. But Zadok the priest, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, Nathan the prophet, Shimei, Rei, and David's personal bodyguard refused to support Adonijah. Adonijah went to the stone of Zeholoth, near the spring of Enrogel, where he sacrificed sheep, cattle, and fattened calves. He invited all his brothers, the other sons of King David, and all the royal officials of Judah. But he did not invite Nathan the prophet, or Benaiah, or the king's bodyguard, or his brother Solomon. Then Nathan went to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and asked her, Haven't you heard that Haggith's son, Adonijah, has made himself king, and our lord David doesn't even know about it? If you want to save your own life and the life of your son Solomon, follow my advice. Go at once to King David and say to him, My lord the king, didn't you make a vow and say to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne? Why then has Adonijah become king? And while you are still talking with him, I will come and confirm everything you have said. So Bathsheba went into the king's bedroom. He was very old now, and Abishag was taking care of him. Bathsheba bowed down before the king. What can I do for you? he asked her. She replied, My lord, you made a vow before the Lord your God when you said to me, Your son Solomon will surely be the next king and will sit on my throne. But instead Adonijah has made himself king, and my lord the king does not even know about it. He has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited Abiathar the priest and Joab the commander of the army, but he did not invite your servant Solomon. And now, my lord the king, all Israel is waiting for you to announce who will become king after you. If you do not act, my son Solomon and I will be treated as criminals as soon as my lord the king has died. While she was still speaking with the king, Nathan the prophet arrived. The king's officials told him, Nathan the prophet is here to see you. Nathan went in and bowed before the king with his face to the ground. Nathan asked, My lord the king, have you decided that Adonijah will be the next king, and that he will sit on your throne? Today he has sacrificed many cattle, fattened calves, and sheep, and he has invited all the king's sons to attend the celebration. He also invited the commanders of the army, and Abiathar the priest. They are feasting and drinking with him and shouting, Long live King Adonijah! But he did not invite me, or Zadok the priest, or Benaiah, or your servant Solomon. Has my lord the king really done this without letting any of his officials know who should be the next king? David makes Solomon king. King David responded, Call Bathsheba. So she came back in and stood before the king. And the king repeated his vow. 
As surely as the Lord lives, who has rescued me from every danger, your son Solomon will be the next king, and will sit on my throne this very day, just as I vowed to you before the Lord, the God of Israel. Then Bathsheba bowed down with her face to the ground before the king, and exclaimed, May my Lord King David live forever. Then King David ordered, called Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada. When they came into the king's presence, the king said to them, Take Solomon and my officials down to Gihon Spring. Solomon is to ride on my own mule. There Zadok the priest and Nathan the prophet are to anoint him king over Israel. Blow the ram's horn and shout, Long live King Solomon! Then escort him back here, and he will sit on my throne. He will succeed me as king, for I have appointed him to be ruler over Israel and Judah. Amen, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, replied. May the Lord, the God of my lord the king, decree that it happen. And may the Lord be with Solomon as he has been with you, my lord the king, and may he make Solomon's reign even greater than yours. So Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, and the king's bodyguard took Solomon down to Gihon Spring, with Solomon riding on King David's own mule. There Zadok the priest took the flask of olive oil from the sacred tent and anointed Solomon with the oil. Then they sounded the ram's horn, and all the people shouted, Long live King Solomon! And all the people followed Solomon into Jerusalem, playing flutes and shouting for joy. The celebration was so joyous and noisy that the earth shook with the sound. Adonijah and his guests heard the celebrating and shouting just as they were finishing their banquet. When Joab heard the sound of the ram's horn, he asked, What's going on? Why is the city in such an uproar? And while he was still speaking, Jonathan, son of Abiathar the priest, arrived. Come in, Adonijah said to him, for you are a good man. You must have good news. Not at all, Jonathan replied. Our lord King David has just declared Solomon king. The king sent him down to Gihon Spring with Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, and Benaiah son of Jehoiada, protected by the king's bodyguard. They had him ride on the king's own mule, and Zadok and Nathan have anointed him at Gihon Spring as the new king. They have just returned, and the whole city is celebrating and rejoicing. That's what all the noise is about. What's more, Solomon is now sitting on the royal throne as king, and all the royal officials have gone to King David and congratulated him, saying, May your God make Solomon's fame even greater than your own, and may Solomon's reign be even greater than yours. Then the king bowed his head in worship as he lay in his bed, and he said, Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who today has chosen a successor to sit on my throne while I am still alive to see it. Then all of Adonijah's guests jumped up in panic from the banquet table and quickly scattered. Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he rushed to the sacred tent and grabbed onto the horns of the altar. Word soon reached Solomon that Adonijah had seized the horns of the altar in fear, and that he was pleading, Let King Solomon swear today that he will not kill me. Solomon replied, If he proves himself to be loyal, not a hair on his head will be touched. But if he makes trouble, he will die. So King Solomon summoned Adonijah, and they brought him down from the altar. He came and bowed respectfully before King Solomon, who dismissed him, saying, Go on home. And that was 1 Kings chapter 1 in the New Living Translation from the Version Bible app. Now for my hair journal. First the highlight, 1 Kings chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Verse 5, About that time, David's son, Adonijah, whose mother was Haggith, began boasting, I will make myself king. So he provided himself with chariots and charioteers and recruited fifty men to run in front of him. Now his father, King David, had never disciplined him at any time, even by asking, Why are you doing that? Adonijah had been born next after Absalom, and he was very handsome. So, what's my explanation? David's son, Adonja, decided to make himself king. His father, King David, had never disciplined him. David failed as a father to bring up his children up in the ways of the Lord. So, 
What's the application for us today? We too can get caught up in the affairs of this life and fail to bring up our children in the way of the Lord. This is how generations fall away from God and His blessings. Reference 3 John chapter 1, verse 4 I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he's old, he will not depart from it. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Proverbs 29.15 The rod and the reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings shame to his mother. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24 Whoever spares the rod hates his son, but he who loves him is diligent to discipline him. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields to the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Matthew 18, 10. See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Colossians chapter 3, verse 21. Fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged. Psalm 127, verses 3 to 5. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are children of one's youth. Blessed is the man who fills his quiver with them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 7 You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lay down, and when you rise. So what's my response? Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful relationship that I share with you. I repent for my feelings as a parent. I pray for all my children, all my generations, that they will know you as Lord and Savior and follow and serve you faithfully and obediently through eternity. I pray for all parents that they follow you and obediently raise up their children in your ways. I pray for anyone that does not know you. May they find you as Lord and Savior and friend. Amen. Amen. Now, how about you? Why don't you try some here journaling? Highlight, explain, apply, respond. You will be so glad you did. Comment below. Share your experiences with us. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, read the Gospel of John chapter 3 to learn about His forgiveness. And talk to God about it. Oh, He loves you. Seek Him now. God bless. See you in the next video.